I could not find a video on YouTube explaining exactly how an orbit sprinkler jar top valve worked. It's a simple looking device, but the way it actually operates is real genius. Take a look at the overall valve. The body is at the bottom. There is an inlet marked by an arrow on one side. The other side is the outlet. There's a solenoid on the top. Let's remove that first. Inside the solenoid is a plunger with a rubberized tip. The solenoid works by energizing an electromagnet within the housing and pulling the plunger back up into the housing. When the solenoid is energized with 24 volts AC, the plunger is pulled back up into the solenoid. You can hear it click when it's pulled in. It only moves an eighth of an inch or so. The tip of the plunger has a soft rubber covering. This valve has a top similar to a mason jar. There is a cap with a black bleed valve to let the air out of it when you take it apart. The top of the cap has a white nylon seat with a tiny hole in the top middle of it. When the solenoid is not engaged or when the valve is closed, this hole at the top of the little seal is plugged off by the rubber tip of the solenoid. More about this later. There's an outer ring that screws off to release the cap, just like a mason jar. Unscrew the cap on one of these and check out what's inside. Be careful when removing the cap because there's a spring in there you don't want to lose. Looking inside, you will see a flexible diaphragm. Pull it out. The diaphragm is made of two parts. The middle is hard plastic with a hole in it. The part with the hole rides up and down on the stainless steel tube mounted inside the housing. The outside of the diaphragm is a soft, flexible rubber. There's a soft rubber ring on the bottom of the hard part that seats on this little reservoir down in the valve. Then, with the help of the diaphragm, the reservoir traps the water and keeps it from passing through the valve unless the time is right. The only way for water to leave the reservoir is up and out the top of this little reservoir. When the diaphragm is down, water cannot pass through the valve. It can only get as far as the reservoir, and a tiny bit of water can get just a little bit further, as I will explain in a second. When the cap is screwed down, it locks the outer edges of the diaphragm down tight. The only part of the diaphragm that can move is the middle part. There is also a hard plastic seat in the housing that you can remove. This seat helps to seal the edges of the diaphragm when the top is screwed down and keep water from leaking out of the edges, the housing. When the cap is screwed down, only the inner part of the diaphragm can move up and down. The valve body has an inlet side and an outlet side. Water is free to come into the inlet, right side, and fill up the small reservoir in the middle. However, water can't pass out of the reservoir into the outlet unless a special condition is met. The diaphragm assembly rides smoothly up and down on this stainless steel tube. The stainless tube is open at the top. It is also open on the outlet side of the valve, right where that little square is. So water can flow into the top of the tube, down through the stainless steel tube, out the square outlet opening on the outlet side. But this can only happen when the solenoid is energized and the solenoid plunger is pulled away from the top of the stainless steel tube. Otherwise, the plunger blocks the top of the tube, keeping water from flowing into it. When the diaphragm is all the way down, the rubber washer on the bottom of the diaphragm seals on this seat. The hard plastic part of the diaphragm fits fairly tightly around the stainless tube, but it is not watertight. A little stream of water can flow up and around the stainless tube and fill up the upper chamber of the valve, which is the part above the diaphragm. So you have water between the diaphragm and the cap when the valve is closed. That water in the top of the valve, above the diaphragm, exerts pressure from the top to keep the diaphragm pushed down or closed. The top of the diaphragm is larger than the bottom of the diaphragm, so there is more water pressure to bear on the top, keeping it down tight. The spring assists in keeping the diaphragm down and also makes sure the diaphragm returns 
completely to the down position when the solenoid is de-energized. Once the pressure is the same under the diaphragm and over the diaphragm, there is no force acting on it to move it up or down. The spring helps to make sure the diaphragm returns to the off position when the solenoid is turned off. When the cap is placed on the body, the little stainless steel tube connects to the tiny seat on the top of the cap. You might notice that the cap has small holes at the top. These holes help to let the water out of the top of the cap when the solenoid is energized. When the solenoid is energized, the little rubber plug that was blocking the top of the stainless tube moves up out of the way. This allows the water under pressure in the top of the cap to flow out through the stainless steel tube, out the little square drain hole. With less water upstairs, the pressure is reduced at the top of the valve. The higher inlet pressure forces the center of the diaphragm up. Imagine this. The upper part is full of water. The solenoid retracts, allowing water to float down the tube in the middle and come out of the square outlet. Now there is nothing holding the water pressure from the bottom of the valve back. The pressure easily overcomes the spring, which is not strong enough to hold back full water pressure. This allows the middle of the diaphragm to flex up about a quarter of an inch. Water flows up out of the small internal reservoir, pushes the diaphragm out of the way, and flows out of the outlet. The tiny amount of water working its way into the top of the valve between the tube and the hard part of the diaphragm can't fill up the upper part fast enough to equalize the pressure. So as long as the solenoid plunger is up, water pressure from below forces the diaphragm up and allows water to flow freely through the valve and to the outlet. Once the solenoid plunger drops back down and blocks the tubing outlet, the pressure between the top and the bottom of the valve equalizes quickly and the spring helps to force the diaphragm down on the seat. In case you are still confused, here are a couple of diagrams. In the closed position, the valve looks like this. Water cannot flow. Water has seeped around the stainless tube into the top of the housing. The solenoid closes off the top of the stainless steel tube. The water at the top exerts more pressure on the diaphragm because the diaphragm has a larger surface area on top. The spring adds a little more pressure to keep the diaphragm pushed down. Here's the open position. The solenoid has been retracted. This allows the water in the upper chamber to flow into the stainless steel tube and out the outlet side. Reduced pressure in the upper chamber allows the water to push the diaphragm up from below, then flow around the valve and out the outlet. The spring tension is not enough to resist the water pressure. The main function of the spring is to return the diaphragm to the downward closed position. Hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching my video.